who sells a gun legally someone who shouldn't be held liable if someone then commits a crime. But now he wants to do that because, of course, we have to ban all guns. He said, but I would relook at that. We're going to relook at that, and I will support stronger provisions. Yes, I'm sure he will. You can count on Bernie Sanders to toe the line on gun control. And when we look at the economic issues that they basically didn't talk about other than uh, health care, they say, oh, yeah, we should uh, have uh, full-on socialist health care. Look at this story from CNN. Five reasons why Venezuela's economy is in meltdown. Bernie Sanders' radical history is coming under more scrutiny. The fact that he went to Nicaragua, that he upheld the Sandinistas. That's why I call him Bernie Sandinista. And it's interesting, I think, in this CNN article where they say these are five reasons why Venezuela's economy is in a meltdown. No, nope, they're not. There's really only two reasons. They do give one reason, uh, the oil, the price of oil being depressed. That has hurt the Venezuelan economy. But the other reason, the principal reason, and what these other four are all about is nothing other than socialism. Look at these other things. A currency that's worth less than a penny. No, that's the effect of socialism. That's not a cause of Venezuela's problems. A new power struggle that is dooming 2016. Again, that is a pushback against the economic and political policies that Bernie Sanders and other socialists support. And that is also an effect. A default in 2016 is difficult to avoid. That's an effect of the socialist policies that Venezuela has uh, followed. And again, we have a food crisis. Again, as we pointed out many times, a 700% return on investment for Wall Street is what's led to this kind of poverty in Venezuela. Yet Bernie Sanders criticizes Wall Street. He will follow the same economic policies that, have made pe that are making people starve in Venezuela if given the chance. And of course, he will pay Wall Street. Stay with us when we come back. We're going to look at a Donald Trump debate where he wasn't present. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which one I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I got to admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet. I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that 
uh, here late, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things, and if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll free 888 253 3139. Well, it wasn't just a Democrat debate this weekend, there was a Donald Trump debate. Of course, he wasn't there. Yet the House of Commons in the UK debated Donald Trump for three hours. You see, while they have their borders opened up for millions of Muslim migrants that they can't vet, that they don't even care to vet, they don't even want Donald Trump to visit. Like Michael Savage, they want to keep him out. And of course, this is misplaced political correctness. It's what political correctness is all about. Intolerance masquerading as tolerance. And this is what they had to say. This is the BBC reporting. They say Paul Flynn said Mr. Trump's call to ban Muslims from the U.S. was, quote, extremely dangerous, but barring him from the U.K., risked being seen as anti-American. But, you know, they're going to do it anyway for the Muslims because they had a member of parliament, Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh, said a ban would be justified on the grounds of religious harmony. There you go. Not tolerance, but harmony with religions. They also went on to say, as they were discussing this, they believed that Mr. Trump's comments had incited acts of violence in the United States. Really? Acts of violence by whom? By Muslims, by the people who are the only ones who think that disagreements justify acts of violence? That would be the Muslims. That's not what Donald Trump is advocating. They say, we give him the role of martyrdom if we're not careful, which can be seen to be an advantage among those who support him. You know, sometime we need to have a discussion about what martyrs really were about. That term was originally meant as witnesses, and it was Christians who were willing to die rather than deny what they had seen as witnesses. But now it is somebody who is willing to kill other people for their religion. Conservative Sir Edward Lay said the UK had invited despots to the, United, to the UK in the past who had done, quote, far, far worse than anything Donald Trump can even dream of. And we should not shut down an honest debate about immigration. And one other person said, I draw the line with freedom of speech when it actually imports violent ideology. Well, they're importing violent ideology when they bring in jihadis or uh, people by massive numbers from areas that are at war with the West and they can't vet those people. And that's essentially what he was saying. As one of these uh, labor MPs said, I don't think Donald Trump should be allowed within a thousand miles of our shores. Donald Trump is free to be a fool, but he is not free to be a dangerous fool in Britain. Well, basically, I would say that about the radical jihadis. I would say they're free to be fools if they want to in their own country, but we shouldn't have them within a thousand miles of our shores. Perhaps it would be easier for them to understand if Donald Trump were speaking in a British accent like this. First of all, it's not a ban long term. This country, our country, has to get its act together. And one thing I have to say, I have tremendous friendships in the Muslim community, tremendous relationships. They're great people. We have to get smart. And the people that I know in the Muslim community agree with me. Are you a bigot? Not at all. Probably the least of anybody you've ever met. And of course, that was a masterful overdub by comedian Peter Serafinowicz. 
Now, we understand that these uh, the open borders and the uh, clash of cultures is being set up by the United Nations. Look at what else they're trying to set up. Of course, you can't have a world government if you don't have a world government tax. The UN is eyeing a tax on football tickets, that'd be soccer tickets for those of us in the United States, to pay for humanitarian aid. And they would love it not only on sporting events, but also on concerts. But just remember, it's voluntary, right? Like our income tax is voluntary. <laughs> the, it started out as an income tax, which is just on dividends and interest and profits, but then it became a wage tax during World War II. It was supposed to be temporary. It never went away. And I remember puzzled, being puzzled about the letters from the IRS as they would send out the forms by mail saying, thank you for participating in our voluntary tax system. That's the way these things go. Understand that it is not going to be voluntary for long, and it is not going to be a micro levy, as they point out, for humanitarian purposes. Of course, it's there to uh, save the children, as they say. Remember, the Boston Tea Party was uh, fought over a 3% tax on tea, only 3%. And when they tell you that it is humanitarian, that it is for the children, look at this article. UN whistleblower who exposed sexual abuse by peacekeepers, UN peacekeepers, is now exonerated. This is something that's been going on for quite some time. It was pointed out by The Guardian. They say the uh, UN whistleblower who exposed the sexual abuse of children by peacekeepers in Central African Republic has been completely exonerated after an internal investigation. And we've reported this multiple times. Anders Compass was suspended and faced dismissal after he passed confidential documents detailing the abuse of children by French troops to authorities in Paris. And of course, we see the same thing applied to Edward Snowden. They say he should be uh, treated as a traitor and not just fired, but he should face a firing squad. And as Anders Compass points out, when they have situations where they're paying girls 50 cents for sex, where they are continually abusing young boys, sodomizing boys repeatedly, he went around official channels and blew the whistle. For that, he should not be fired, just as Ed Snowden should not be considered to be a traitor. But of course, we see Ted Cruz labeling him now as a traitor instead of a hero. We've seen uh, Donald Trump call him a traitor. Pretty much everybody in the GOP except for Rand Paul. Now, stay with us when we come back. Today is Martin Luther King Day. We have an editorial USA Today saying whites killed Martin Luther King. No, when we come back. We're going to give you an update on who really killed Martin Luther King. Stay with us. The race to be the Secretary General of the United Nations is clandestinely underway. The second term of current Secretary General, former South Korean Foreign Minister Ban Ki moon comes to an end on December 31st, 2016. Today's United Nations has mutated from its supposed noble peacekeeping 1945 birth under FDR's United Nations Charter. And I am confident that the Congress and the American people will accept the results of this conference as the beginning of a permanent structure of peace. Into a new world order antagonizing behemoth, waiting in the wings to crush the sovereignty of nations across the globe. So who will lead the criminally immune New World Order's IMF-backed intergovernmental planetary organization emboldened by the rollout of the Department of Justice's handover of local police to the United Nations Global Police Stasi convolution via the Strong Cities Network, or the final word afforded it by Obama's unconstitutional Trans-Pacific Partnership, where, for example, Scenarios such as these will begin to be played out as The Atlantic reported a Vietnamese company that owns 15 restaurants in San Francisco files a lawsuit saying that the pay increase violates the investor protection provisions of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement recently approved by Congress. The lawsuit is not in a federal or state court, but instead will be heard by three private arbitrators. The United States government is the sole defendant. Who will drop the United Nations green agenda-fueled hammer continuing Obama's war on coal? Who will be the one to ramp up the initiatives of Agenda 21? Who will be the face of the New World Order's final rollout as the curtain is finally lifted? Quite possibly one of the usual New World Order dupes. Of a New World Order. Barack Obama, 
Tony Blair, Angela Merkel, or Bill Clinton. Rumors of Barack Obama's interest have already created rumblings abroad. The Kuwaiti daily Al Jarita report that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has heard the rumor and is recruiting the Persian Gulf states, including Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain, new allies in fear of Iran to cut the president off at the pass. The Jerusalem Post reports that its sources close to Mr. Netanyahu do not deny the speculation that the Prime Minister aims to